Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel where I explore the fascinating world of science. In this video, I'm going to answer a question that many of you have asked me, why do particles spin? What does it mean for an electron, a proton, or a photon to have spin? And how does it affect the behavior of matter and energy? But before we dive into the topic, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now, let's talk about spin. Spin is one of the most mysterious and fundamental properties of subatomic particles. It is not something that we can easily visualize or understand with our everyday intuition. In fact, spin is so weird that even some of the greatest physicists in history had trouble grasping it. For example, Albert Einstein once wrote in a letter to his friend Wolfgang Pauli, I cannot seriously believe in quantum mechanics because physics should represent a reality in time and space, free from spooky actions at a distance. And what was one of the spooky actions that Einstein was referring to? You guessed it, spin. So what is spin exactly? Well, the simplest way to think about it is as a form of angular momentum. Angular momentum is the amount of rotation that an object has around a certain axis. For example, when you spin a top, it has angular momentum around its vertical axis. When you throw a frisbee, it has angular momentum around its horizontal axis. And when you ride a bicycle, it has angular momentum around its front wheel axis. But angular momentum is not only associated with macroscopic objects like tops, frisbees, and bicycles. It is also associated with microscopic objects like electrons, protons, and photons. These particles also have some amount of rotation around some axis. And this rotation is what we call spin. However, there is a big difference between the spin of subatomic particles and the spin of ordinary objects. The spin of subatomic particles is not caused by any physical motion or rotation of the particles themselves. In fact, subatomic particles are considered to be point-like, meaning that they have no size or shape at all. So how can something that has no size or shape rotate? Well, the answer is, it can't. At least not in the classical sense. The spin of subatomic particles is not a classical property that we can measure or observe directly. It is a quantum property that we can only infer from experiments and mathematical models. One way to infer the spin of subatomic particles is by using magnetic fields. As you may know, moving charges produce magnetic fields. And since subatomic particles are charged, they also produce magnetic fields when they move. But what's interesting is that subatomic particles also produce magnetic fields even when they are not moving. And these magnetic fields are proportional to their spin. This means that we can use magnetic fields to manipulate and measure the spin of subatomic particles. For example, we can use a device called a stern gerlach apparatus to separate a beam of atoms into two beams according to their spin orientation. This experiment was first performed by Otto Stern and Walther Gerlach in 19221, and it showed that atoms have discrete values of spin. Another way to infer the spin of subatomic particles is by using quantum statistics. Quantum statistics are rules that describe how identical particles behave when they are put together in a system. For example, quantum statistics tell us that two electrons cannot occupy the same quantum state in an atom. This is known as the Pauli exclusion principle too, and it explains why atoms have different energy levels and chemical properties. But what does this have to do with spin? Well, it turns out that quantum statistics depend on the spin of the particles involved. There are two types of quantum statistics, Fermi-Dirac statistics and Bose-Einstein statistics too. Fermi-Dirac statistics apply to particles with half-integer spins, such as electrons, protons, and neutrons. These particles are called fermions too. Bose-Einstein statistics apply to particles with integer spins, such as photons and mesons. 
These particles are called bosons too. The difference between fermions and bosons is that fermions obey the Pauli exclusion principle, while bosons do not. This means that fermions cannot occupy the same quantum state in a system, while bosons can. This has profound implications for the behavior of matter and energy at different scales. For example, at low temperatures, fermions form a state of matter called a Fermi gas, where the particles are packed as close as possible without violating the Pauli exclusion principle. This state of matter is responsible for the stability of white dwarf stars and neutron stars, which are composed of degenerate fermions too. On the other hand, at low temperatures, bosons form a state of matter called a Bose-Einstein condensate, where the particles occupy the same quantum state and act as a single entity. This state of matter is responsible for phenomena such as superfluidity and superconductivity, where fluids and metals flow without friction or resistance too. So, as you can see, spin is a very important property of subatomic particles that determines their magnetic behavior, their quantum statistics, and their collective behavior. Spin is also related to other properties of subatomic particles, such as charge, mass, and interactions. For example, spin is involved in the electromagnetic force between charged particles, the weak force between quarks and leptons, and the strong force between quarks and gluons too. But despite its importance and ubiquity, spin remains one of the most elusive and mysterious aspects of quantum mechanics. We still don't have a clear physical picture or interpretation of what spin really is or how it works. We only have mathematical models and experimental results that describe its effects. Maybe one day we will find a deeper understanding of spin and its role in the nature of reality. Until then, we can only marvel at its beauty and complexity. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about spin. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.